here they are! <laughs> Family photo! <laughs> Oh, with the exception of one, though. Little giraffe isn't with us anymore. Shari Cochum's requested an update on my summer blooming fowls. And well, ta-da! Thank you for your patience, Shari. When your request came through, <laughs> yes, I had a few in bud that I really, really thought, well, that would be perfect if they were in bloom for the update. So six weeks ago, I had a bud or two showing. Two weeks later, I still had a bud or two showing. <laughs> Talk about the come on! <laughs> Anyway, orchids are what they are, as long as the buds bloomed out, and they did. But what we're going to do is do an update over yonder, because space and light influence, they are all currently getting an Epsom salt soak at 150 parts per million. The reason I went with 150 parts per million this time around, and not 100 like I would normally do, is because mine were desperate for magnesium. And so I'm upping the ante a little bit just to <clears throat> see if I can't push the correction a little bit faster. Don't know if that's going to work, but that's what's happening today. Anyway, let's take them over one by one, have a look-see. I also have my garlic alcohol and a paintbrush ready just in case I see something while I have the candidate in the viewfinder because... Eyes aren't that good, but funny enough, when I see something on camera, it's like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know that was there. So, let's go. Let's start off with the Phalaenopsis Leodoro Sweet Memory. Still got one bloom left, and you know what? It's the bloom that opened first. The blooms that opened after this one, they have fallen off. Well, there we go. At least it's still got one. Right, what's going on with this orchid? Check this out. This orchid is in dire straits of needing attention. None of mine have been repotted since I got them. Some have been in their pot four years and some have been in their pot three years, which totally goes against the rule that I always do two or three years. But with Phalaenopsis, especially when the roots aren't going to take over a pot that fast, I've got plenty of time to extend that margin that I put on myself. But we are now getting to the point where, yes, I need to address these. And especially the sweet memory because I've got root growth happening. Root tips are growing like everywhere, which means something is probably going to happen in the pot as well. Also around the base root tips. I mean, when I put the Epsom salts into this one, there was enough gargling and bubbling going on. If I don't do it this year, it's not going to hurt the orchid for another year, but still, I would like to get into these and then settle them down before the winter comes. And then what you can see here, my magnesium correction is working. It's getting much, much better. I hardly see any blotches with the exception on an old leaf in the back here. Yeah, that's probably not going to be corrected, but the new leaves are nice. It's growing a new leaf as well. And what you see here as a line, that is not a reflection or anything from what's behind me. This is where the other leaf was covering it at this point in time. So that section got a lot less light. That's what you're seeing there. That is not magnesium deficiency. Very happy to see a new leaf though. And bonus, I'm not seeing any pests at all. So we can go and get the next one. This is Phalaenopsis cornosurvi variety Chatella Day, and I do not need to see what I see in the viewfinder. There's a mealybug right here, but not for long. Yeah, this one is starting to go into more bud growth and what you see right there is actually a new spike. So all the older spikes are extending. A uh, lot of sun here. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, you can see they're all extending and there's already a little bud forming right in there. Tiny little bud starting. So thankfully when she was indoors and I brought her outdoors while she was in bloom with buds on her to dedicate the blooms, I lost all the other buds. Now that she's living outside, I think we're going to have a nice little flush of more blooms. She is also starting to actively grow roots. So that root tip is extending, which is awesome. And that means something is also going to be happening in the pot. And she's a heavy, heavy orchid. And then there's a little branching happening right there so yeah this one doesn't need to be repotted she was repotted i think two years ago and bumped up two pot sizes so there's no need to be going in and doing anything with this one except monitoring 
any mealybugs that want to try and get access to the happy sap. Here we have Purdy Purdy Pinkton Bronze Age, still in bloom. Look at that. Now the color is fading a little bit. We don't have that bright kick of bronze anymore. I've already lost a bloom, but this orchid is so happy in her pot and I'm probably not going to be repotting this one, even though she's starting to look like she's lifting herself out. I think I've got another good year that she can stay in. She did not bloom for me in 2021, so there was probably some adjusting time that she needed to deal with. Now that she's dealt with that adjusting time, I'm just gonna leave her and see if she will be a regular bloomer, regular meaning in 2023, just bloom again, and then we're gonna deal with whatever cleanup I need to do in the pot. Not much to see here except for pretty, pretty blooms. Pinkton Bronze Age is doing well. Tabasco Tex, yeah. I am managing to correct the magnesium deficiency on this orchid. It is looking so much better. All the leaves are somewhat starting to even out with the exception of the oldest ones back here, but it's getting better. It was much, much worse. And if I can find footage from earlier in the season to compare, I will do that. But trust me, it was much, much worse. So this is the reflection of dappled shade. And there you can see how the leaf still has some blotches in it. Much better though. And the new little side plant that is growing here on the side, sorry for that jiggle, right here, its leaf is now extending. The only thing is, because my Phalaenopsis were so stressed from the very very long extended spring that we had and cold for that matter. I have not had them in as much light as they can tolerate because I don't want to stress them even further. So this summer is just going to be a tiding over of sorts, getting them to strength and filling them up with nutrients as best as possible to prepare them for the winter. And then we shall see how the circumstances are in the winter and whether we can give them the supplemental lighting that they require, plus the higher temperatures. This orchid has to be addressed. <laughs> this is, um, yeah, the pot is rock hard when I take it out and there is no give. And I think I'm getting a second little plantlet growing here. It could also be a spike, but uh, spike growth at this point in time, I'm not entirely sure. It's got plenty of spikes, but because of the lack of fertilizer during spring, they didn't extend very well. So we have ourselves some stunted spikes in the back. And then we also forfeited some blooms because of another spike that is way down underneath this leaf, which if I force it might crack. That's where this bloom is coming from. But the first two blooms on that spike didn't make it properly. They were all scrunched up down there, so I nipped them off without having them bloom out. Yeah, I've been nipping off some of the blooms as they were looking old for the video. I've left this one on. It's still looking okay. It looks better on camera than in real life. It's fading and the orchid is now putting energy, hopefully, into new root growth and new leaf growth. That would be awesome. We can concern ourselves with blooming further down the line, hopefully as long as they stay alive. My Yin's Black Eagle didn't bloom for me again. That's two years in a row that it didn't bloom for me. So it does require a lot of light early spring for it to actually trigger any form of spike or blooming. It's alive. That's all I can ask of it. And it is busy, busy growing new roots. Look at that delicious root right there going straight into the media. Other roots are also going straight into the media. I hope that's in focus. I've got quite the glare. But yeah, you see there's another root that is new right there, going straight in. And the one that's curling around the pot is extending. And that's okay. I don't need to interfere in this orchid this year, so there won't be a repot. But um, I would like to see a new leaf, to be honest with you. You can see the magnesium deficiency back here, but things are looking a lot better. You can still see remnants of it down here. There's blotches down here. Yeah, it's looking better though. I'm more pleased now than I was a couple of months ago, that's for sure. So just live and hopefully one day we'll see our Yin's Black Eagle in bloom at some point in time.
Here we have a sensational orchid, even though she looks a bit patetico, if I may say so myself. And I've purposely left her in the position with that bloom having a little bit of backlight from the sun. It is amazing. I was not a fan of these blooms, to be honest with you, the first time I saw them bloom out, because my KTC Kaokicha Kut that I bought according to the picture had a completely different bloom more along the lines of Pinkton Bronze Age and a rounder shape and open. This bloom has a claw-like appearance. You see that? It doesn't open flat. Anyway, gotten used to the blooms, loving the fragrance. Very, very sweet. Has a bit of a Skittles fragrance to it with a little bit of, well, should I say mint? Whatever happens with the fragrance on this is determined by how much light it is getting and today being in somewhat sunshine and brighter light. It is very pretty though. Now you will see here, that is cold damage. This is nitrogen, lack of nitrogen at the tips right here because the orchid was pulling on reserves during the spring. Then you see signs of magnesium deficiency, all the blotches. It's all happening with this orchid at the moment. However, I can see that the last leaf it grew for me last year is not affected as badly with the magnesium deficiency. There is some up there. No fertilizer during the spring, of course, because of the conditions. Same with this one, but this one is the most affected of all of them. And because it is such a slow grower, I did not dare put any fertilizer into that pot because her roots are, of course, also very, very precious. And the little that she has given me, I didn't want to kill them with any kind of salt buildup. So I was being very, very cautious, and I mean very cautious with fertilizer or anything. This one wants higher light. Of course, same with this one. I'm not giving it as much as it can tolerate because I want it to recover. It has enough bright shade for it to do what it needs to do. I am so tempted to take these blooms off so that it can then start growing a new leaf because that's just going to take forever. But before I do that, I do have to dedicate the blooms. <laughs> yeah, she's super slow. And for that reason, any correction that I'm doing right now will also be very, very slow in making any form of difference. Her metabolism is like mine. It simply doesn't exist. Well, nearly non-existent. <laughs> but she's alive. That's going to be a common theme throughout this entire update. <laughs> I'm going to also stick with the theme of backlit blooms. Look at that. This is Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with Violacea. When I couldn't afford the Violacea back in the day, I got myself something that at least had Violacea in it. <laughs> and well, close enough, right? Still, this orchid is responding superbly to the Epsom salts treatments that she's had since the beginning of May or mid-May. Her leaves are looking so much more lush. And um, yeah, the glossy reflection is kind of part and parcel of looking lush. This makes me very, very happy. The back leaf here is still a little bit blotchy. I wonder if in the shade it may just show up a little bit more obvious. So that's a bit blotchy. It is the last leaf though, so we'll see if that's ever going to recover. But you can also see on the color of the leaves here how dark those leaves are. They should be more towards a lighter green, more yellow in them. But in all of these, my goal is not to get the right leaf color, but just to tie them over, give them strength, let them know I do love them and I'm not torturing them on purpose. <laughs> she is not doing anything exciting on the root front. As a matter of fact, this is not looking good at all. But whatever is in the pot, it is responding. Otherwise, the leaves wouldn't be looking the way they are. And I'm not going to be interfering with this orchid this summer at all. Those roots are not thick enough to be occupying any kind of substantial amount of space in the pot. So she'll be okay for at least another year, if not two. But yeah, so happy to see that at least she is responding superbly to the Epsom salt soaks. And here we have the real deal, the proper Phalaenopsis violacea. Well, mine is the variety Cerula. Incredible. Yeah, she came to me as a discount because she was a little bit wacky and wonky looking. I didn't think that anybody would want to pay a price for an orchid that looks all out of sorts. 
You know, people like to have flat, chunky, beautifully laid down leaves. And mine came along and looked like it was a spirulina spaghetti or something. There we go, like that. You know, that's what she came with. And she never corrected herself. But bit by bit, I'm getting the leaves to grow out flat and beautifully. It's taken some time. And I thought all that effort would be interrupted during the spring. But nope. Well, what do we got? Cobwebs here? Yeah. My spiders should be helping me with the mealybugs, but I need to intervene every once in a while. Okay, so we have stopped what I thought could be stem rot. And in this case, I used cinnamon. I did not use cinnamon for my giraffe. So I applied cinnamon several times. I was completely, if I say freaked out, I'm not exaggerating because I could see what was happening with my giraffe and... Uh, yeah, in this case, it worked out and we've got our first little bloom. She is not that active on the root front, of course, for now. Focusing on getting her bloom out, which is fine by me. The spike in the back also looks like there may be another one further down the line if that is in focus. But at least I've got active roots in the pot, even though the ones on the surface do not look the part. I'm not interfering with the orchid. I'm not taking her out of the pot. If anything, I shall be digging around on the surface of the leka and try to maneuver this root into the pot a little bit better. Or if that doesn't work, I will be putting a microfiber over it just to protect it a little bit. But yeah, phew, thank goodness. I don't see much of the magnesium deficiency that I had before. If you see a shadow line like right here, I don't know. There's like a line, a shadow across the leaf there. That is from the leaf underneath and the light playing tricks on us. But that is not a magnesium deficiency that I am correcting. Everything else is looking much better as well than it did a couple of months ago. Super relieved. I can't tell you, super relieved. Deep breath, enjoy the moment and enjoy the blooms. This soak took approximately 30 minutes. That is plenty of time. Now I'm going to go and flush them through with just plain RO water and fill up the reservoir with 160 parts per million of fertilizer. For the big one, the corner survey variety Chattel Day, she's getting 300 parts per million. And that is my update, Sherry Cochums. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you can see that things are improving and going along in the right direction. If not, let me know. I can assure you I am much more relieved because I can see things are going in the right direction. And hopefully it will stay that way. Stay tuned for the repot of several of my summer bloomers. I am not entirely sure when I'm going to get into those, but get into those I will because needs must. I appreciate your request, Cherry Coachums. Thank you very much. And also anybody who's watched this video also appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. One final thing left for me to say that I do wish you a beautiful day. As always, though, I do attach a condition to that, and that is that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.